Hi, I'm Leon, and today we will talk about passage planning using paper charts and electronic charts side by side. There's a lot of talking about uh, hydrographic offices seizing the production of paper charts. And many sailors and even the press assume that means that we will completely go over to electronic charts. I think that's just about as much bullshit as if we would say that thanks to the fact that we have invented the screen, there will be no paper necessary in the future. Well, the uh, statistics in the future says that we will still have 75 to 80 million tons of printing paper necessary because the printing and electronics will be going hand in hand. And I will show you here how I do passage planning and following the IMO and the ROA regulations that you should do it in appraisal, planning, executing and monitoring. That's four phases for performing a passage. So let's assume first that you would only do it on electronic charts. Well, how do you do that with the overview? Even if you have one of the biggest plotters available, a 16-inch plotter screen, it is merrily bigger than an A4 paper of, um, uh, of a chart. And if you look at your uh, computer screen, <laughs> besides that it's much too dark in the sun's uh, light, it has also, well, my laptop is 13-inch. That's much smaller than A4. Now look at this. This is a screen to talk about. This is a screen where you can look with your eyes and see all these nice hazards. You look along here, you can zoom in and you can zoom out and you still have the overview and know the distances. Well, paper charts will have a really, really great future because there will be printing houses and publishing houses like Imre and NV Charts and uh, Delius Glasing who still will print the paper, but on demand. So the moment you order a chart, you will get a really fresh one just printed. And even more luxurious, maybe in the future, in the near future, you will be able to decide which area to cover and then you will get that as a paper on um, great size and great quality. So I believe that paper charts is, has a great future, especially for planning. So going through the planning phases, I've put some books here and the paper chart, how I go through this from left to right. Well, when you first decide on where you want to cruise or when you want to get some inspirations, well, I'm in Brittany right now and uh, some German sailors might like um, uh, Commissar Dupin, uh, that is a uh, uh, commissary series. You can read some books about that. You can watch the movies to get some inspirations. From a sailing perspective, you I like the reading a uh, yachting companion. Well, this book, that just shows them inspiration where you should go, where it is nice to sail to. So that is a nice bedside reading long before you cast off and do the planning. And then when it comes to the planning phase, you go into the almanacs because there are the details. So you have the Imre cruising almanac or the uh, reeds. And I get very many questions about what's the difference between these two? Well, I must say they're both very useful. They have similar information in there, but as you can see that the reeds has a smaller um, footprint, but it is thicker. That gives a good indication what this is all about. So the Imre is very good for navigation, has fantastic charts um, and a lot of information on how you get in there and they work perfectly together with their paper charts. Whereof reads are more the pedagogic way. So they have a lot of information about uh, secondary port calculations. So that's why the RYA uses the reads format to teach the classic navigation, whereof the IMRE is more hands-on. If there is a secondary port close by, let's use that instead. What I do like with reads is that they have a lot of more information, more than navigation. They have telephone numbers to embassies, the police, the hospital, chandleries, and, and this sort of things. So here you get the uh, details for the passage planning. And then when you approach the new harbor or the place you want to go, you might want to have a book where you get detailed information on uh, anchorages or a pilot book where you get a lot of information which is more static. It, not to compare with this one. This is for inspiration. This is for the approach when you do the pilotage plan. 
because a passage plan comes not only in these four steps but the passage plan itself that is then consisting of first a pilotage plan how you get out of the harbor that I actually think is quite easy because when you came in uh, you can most probably find a way out and you can decide at what time and whether you would go out but getting uh, and then you have the passage and then you make a passage plan along the way uh, maybe taking uh, currents into account, tidal heights and things like that, hazards along the way. And then at the end you have a new pilotage plan, how to get into the new harbour. And that I always think is a bit thrilling when I've never been there. It's a huge dis uh, difference if you've already been to the place in question. To help you do the passage plan, um, I have um, I have to because I'm a commercial vessel, but I have developed these passage plan uh, templates uh, consisting of an overview, the appraisal, the first step, who is on board, and making a checklist um, a day before you go or something. And then comes the planning with the hazards, the course to steers. Maybe you don't have to do this too much in detail if you plan to use the uh, electronic charts but you should take the tidal currents and the speeds into consideration nevertheless and during the execution here I have a checklist what you have to do uh, while you are underway and uh, for instance you have watch schemes and in the very end you should monitor while you're going there how is it working do you have a plan B and what you do for seasickness and things like that and for the planning itself when it comes to tidal heights and tidal calculations, if you can anchor in the right uh, height of tide, how much chain you should uh, take, uh, let out, um, avoiding that, the, um, that your keel touches the ground, and to choose the best way of um, using the tides. Here is my uh, passage plan template for tidal calculations. This is uh, for tides, and that uh, there is a separate video on that. So when does electronic uh, navigation come in? Well that is the monitoring, execution and the monitoring phase. So I use definitely paper charts when it comes to the whole planning. Comparing with the books it is fantastic to have a book that you can you know go forwards and backwards and find information. Put little little stickers here uh, so you can easily find them and then while I'm sailing then I use electronic navigation because that, that is when that comes in very handy when you have the details and you just want to know exactly where you are avoiding the traffic using the radar and um, here the monitoring phase is very important to monitor what the electronics are saying you have to do cross references I do some cross bearings even though if I don't use the hand bearing compass so often maybe but I do use my big compass in the center of the boat to do a approximate bearings if it is uh, so to speak correct and when I'm sailing over a say 20 meter curve and then add the height of tide uh, what is valid uh, right now at this point so that is a cross check that I do I always uh, also like using the radar and then coming into a new place well, like when we came into Morlaix, that is very tidal, so you have to sail over land. Normally when you sail through the river or on the river, it looks all very normal. You're very surprised just where the buoys are placed. But when the water has gone, you really understand when you go there at low water, why you had to do this zigzag curve. And um, to see how the water is looking at low water, maybe you are lucky enough that Google has flown over this place with their satellites at low water and fair enough it had on um, uh, in this case uh, sailing into Mollet and using Google Maps to see where you should be sailing and using the transit lines which are very important these transit lines yes they are mentioned in the electronic charts but they are not very easy to see there on the paper charts in these guidebooks it says clearly follow the uh, transit lines so paper gives you very much information <laughs> here you can see one of my friends who uh, tried to sail in there didn't do the uh, homework uh, checking for the transit lines and went into the middle of the river thought it was the safest and ran aground and remember if you 
run aground, try it to do in soft mud and on a rising tide. So do take advantage of all the information available in these paper charts and in the pilot books so you can continue sailing in safety, comfort and style.